Under the old covenant, the sacrifices were animals. And, and these animals served as a substitutionary atonement. The animals were killed in place of the offeror so that the offeror could stay alive, so that the offeror could be in relationship, right relationship with God. I mean, this was huge. This is a huge component of the temple services to keep Israel in line and, and, and that intimacy with the Lord. But because we know what does sin do? Sin cuts you off from God. Isaiah 59, it separates you from God. Something has to be done. This is what was done. Animals were losing their lives. There are a few characteristics that I want to point out before we really dig into this deeper today. Characteristics that these animals that were given their life possessed that actually made them qualified to fulfill what God had called, what God had set forth in the Torah. And the first one is, is guess what? You couldn't just offer any animal. Only clean animals could be offered. And actually, when you go through the Torah, you'll notice God is very specific. There are different events that call for specific animals. Whether you're talking about Passover with a, with a lamb or a goat, or Yom Kippur, which calls explicitly for bulls and goats. The Torah is very explicit in what animal had to be sacrificed in what situation. But one thing, and this is without exception, this is true. In every case, the common denominator of all these various animals, they all were clean. They were all clean animals. To attempt to, uh, to offer to the most high God a pig or, 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 or a donkey or anything of that measure, it wouldn't just have been rejected, not just rejected as an offering, it was an abomination to him. Wasn't just clean. There's something else that we need to consider. And that is this, Deuteronomy 17, verse one. You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God a bull or sheep which has any blemish or defect, for that is an abomination to the Lord your God. Okay, so it's not enough to have a clean animal for it to be accepted on God's holy altar. No, 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 no. It had to be perfect without blemish. Now that's fascinating to me because we're already looking at the characteristics that are required for legitimate sacrifice. And what do we see? We see the characteristics that Yeshua himself bore. He was clean. He was perfect. And Peter says he was a lamb without blemish. An acceptable sacrifice. He was acceptable before the Lord. There's something else I want to point out about animal sacrifices. And really, I want to zero in on this one point, and that is the blood. See, ultimately, the purpose the, for killing the animal was not simply to kill it and to offer its innards, you know, whether the liver and the kidneys on, on the altar. No, 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 no. The priests, the Lord, the offeror, they were, offer, they were after one thing. They were after the blood, the blood of the animal. And why? Well, Leviticus 17, 11 tells us, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the souls. So you think about the substitutionary atonement of taking this animal. What kept the animal alive, we're told, is the blood. That blood was taken. That animal literally gave its life. What kept him alive, that animal gave so that the offeror didn't have to. The power is in the blood. See, this is why as we get into the New Testament, the writers are focused on the blood. They keep talking about the blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The power is in the blood. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> you, you think about how you know, people talk about Revelation today, and it's, it's a controversial book. And if you know your church history, you find that the, this was a book that was hotly debated. They did not want to include it in the canon. I mean, it swirls in controversy. I want to be very clear. On my list, it doesn't even make the top three controversial books in a historical setting. Not even close. The book of Acts would come in at number three. The book of Galatians would come in at number two. The most controversial book you will read in the New Testament, hands down, in its historical setting is the book of Hebrews. The things that he says in there 
will get you stoned. And so in Hebrews chapter 10, verse one, this is what we read. For the Torah, having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things. Now, obviously he's alluding. The image is Yeshua himself. He is the image. So this is what Torah, and then Paul talks about this in Galatians. The law, it points us to Yeshua. There are things in the law. There are things in the animal sacrifices that point us to Yeshua. And in other words, the characteristics. They're foreshadow, okay? And they can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. Now, two things. Number one, here we are in chapter 10. We're just getting out of chapter nine. Chapter nine, the writer articulates Yom Kippur. He's going through the Yom Kippur service and talking about how Yom Kippur happens year after year. And so this is kind of the backdrop of this. And Yom Kippur was the the, the high holy day. This was the day that the sins of Israel would be wiped away. This is the only day that the Kohen Gadol would go into the Holy of Holies, the Kodesh HaKodeshim and bring in blood. And so he's playing off of chapter nine. And so he says, continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. Now, I want to be clear. There's nothing ambiguous about the statement. There's no mystery here. The writer is showing the inadequacy of the sacrificial system under the old covenant. There's no debate. You can't get around it. You can't spin this. You can't possibly spin this. It doesn't work unless you attempt to try to discredit the book itself, which, as we have already talked about, is already being done and has already been done. But moving on to verse 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Now, the writer is brilliant, totally inspired. And what he's doing, he's just telling you, look at the system for what it is. Look at the system. we, We did the same thing with the priesthood. You just look at its history and the Bible's screaming out and telling you, this is not God's final product. This is not his end game. There has to be more because would they not have ceased to be offered? It's the obvious conclusion for the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. Oh, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Year after year after year, Yom Kippur after Yom Kippur after Yom Kippur, there you are confronted with your sins. Because that was the point of the animal sacrifices. But here we see, he's showing here one of the major problems under the old covenant sacrificial system. A reminder over and over. And then he goes on and says, for it is not possible. And that's exactly what it says. Again, you can't spin this to make it say something else. It says it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats, which is exactly what was offered on Yom Kippur, could take away sins. Think about this. And for us, hindsight's easy, 2020. But if it were possible, then why did Christ come? If we had a system that was perfect and that worked, his death would be in vain. Because we already got this. Sin's already being dealt with. There's absolutely no point for him to die for us. But the reality is, is, is it wasn't perfect. Hey there, this is Mike at Corner Fringe Ministries. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked the video or it encouraged you, do us a favor. Hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the share. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. Now, if you want to watch the rest of this video, hit the button here. And if you want to watch the rest of this series, you can check it out here. And don't forget, you can download the Corner Fringe Ministries app today on any of your play stores. Thanks for joining us at Corner Fringe Ministries.